Now, some of you don't not too sure about that, but I, 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 I don't know if you recognize it, but times are changing. You see, there was a time when we used to greet each other with a handshake. And then it moved from the handshake to the punching of the fists. And nowadays when I see young people greeting one another, you know how they greet each other? Bloop, bloop. <laughs> Gunshot. Times are changing. And I, I, I don't know if you, you recognize it or not, but, it, but, it, but it's not changing for the better, but it seems to be changing for the worse. Nowadays, the leaders are changing. There was a leadership change somewhere in Zimbabwe the other day. Wasn't that right? And even with the leadership change, I, I, I haven't seen much in the news, but I, I, if you were to go over to Zimbabwe and ask the folks, has things really changed? Well, I don't know. I haven't been over there. But if you ask someone the question, has things really changed? I, I, I think the question would come, things hasn't really changed. In fact, they might have got a little bit worse. And, and, and times are changing. Things are changing so much around the world, saints of God, that even, you know, when I was growing up as a little boy, we used to look up to leaders, for example. Our prime ministers, we could look up to them for leadership. Our presidents, you could look up to them for leadership. But, but, but I was looking in the news the other day. They, there's a president somewhere across the ocean there named something called Trump. And, and, and there's another one in another part of the world somewhere in Korea. And, 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 and these two leaders... One of them started to, uh, and, and, and you, you could look up to leadership one time, and, 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 but these two world leaders start to argue about who got the biggest button to press. Oh, you, you didn't read that? Mr. What's his name over in Korea pressed his, said he, he tested missiles and claimed that, and then Mr. Trump said, I got a bigger button than yours. You know, like children in the playground messing about and praying, playing and, 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 and they, say, they say, I got a bigger stick to hit you with. And, and, and they're fighting around in the play. And when I look at our world leadership, they, they, they themselves are changing for the worse. You can't find any quality world leaders. Well, that's, that's, that's bad enough over there, but when I come over here, those leaders that led us into Brexit, one of them is the foreign secretary driving. He was driving around on a bus telling us a whole load of lies. How much money are we going to save back in the health service? And there was another one driving around the place. And then when they, when they actually won the Brexit vote for us to leave Europe, guess what? All of them run away and be quiet. But I like Theresa May. Theresa May said that. What's the one there? What's the name? Boris Johnson said, you ain't going to get away with that. You're going to come and be right in the cabinet. And go out there and meet the foreign people because of all them things you were telling people. So he was proper shocked when he got a lead, he got a, a, a um, he got an appointment in the government. But I'm here to let you know that even though the world is changing, and even though times are changing, I, I, I want you to understand today that Jesus never changes. We serve a mighty God. That when everything else around us is changing, our God never fails and he never changes. And so we can rest assured that we serve a mighty God. I don't know about you Christian friend, but I get excited when I speak about God. Because he never changes. And so today, for our scripture reading, I thought we would look at a little passage in Revelation. Well... That's just our opening scripture. Can we turn there to Revelation chapter 3? What book did I say? As we prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ, hear the words of Jesus in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 11. You know what the Bible says? In the words of Jesus, it says, Behold, I come quickly. Are you with me there, saints? Behold, I come quickly. And the Bible says, and then, but Jesus says, so, so knowing that he's coming soon, guess what the Lord says? Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man takes thy crown. 
Jesus says, behold, I come quickly. So I want you to do something, Christian friends. He said, I want you to hold fast to that which you have so that no one steals your crown. I want you to understand, Christian friends, that the Bible tells me that the devil is going around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And that's why Jesus is speaking to his churches in the Revelation. He, he's saying, Christian friends, Jesus is coming and he wants us to hold fast to that which we have so that no one steals our crown. And, and, and you know, that is why it is good for you to have these days of fellowship. Because you've come from Zimbabwe to the United Kingdom and, 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 and some of us have realized that this is not cut out to be what we thought it would be. Some of us, you know, they used to talk about the streets that were paved with gold. The land of milk and honey. And, and, and you kind of thought UK was kind of good. You come here, you think to yourself, wait a minute. This place ain't so good. My mom, my mom and dad came from Jamaica to the United Kingdom. And my dad said he was coming here for five years. <laughs> it, 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 it's my dad's 84th birthday in, in the next few weeks and he, he hasn't been back to Jamaica. <laughs> and I'm sure he came here in his early 20s or, or late. So, so you can kind of have an idea how old I might be. He came here as a 19 year old to work for five years and to go back to Jamaica and he's still here. My mom died here. My mom said when she came to the UK, she said, she said, she said, she said when she came to the UK, she couldn't understand what was going on. Because she saw, you know, they had bread. You know the milkman in those days, the milkman used to deliver your bread. They used to take the whole bread with no wrapper and put it on the stairs. <laughs> My mom said, that is nastiness. <laughs> the bread that they just bake with no wrapper, no paper, they would put the bread on the stairs with the milk. My mom said, back home, that could never happen. You have to wrap it up properly health and hygiene and i think it was through many people coming from the african continent and the caribbean continent that they start to wrap up bread <laughs> no they never used to wrap up the bread if you used to carry it you, you you look certain parts of europe they put the bread under their arm <laughs> with no wrapper and walking down the street that couldn't happen in zimbabwe i'm sure I went into the shop one day and I saw, I saw, there was, my mom said, we went into the shop and we saw the cake shop. We went into the cake shop and there was a cake and I saw flies, all flies from everywhere, land on the cake, on the icing. And I said, mom, look at that. And the lady went behind the counter, what's that, you never seen flies? <laughs> and then mama, and then I said, I don't want that. And my mom said, I wasn't going to buy it. <laughs> they, 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 and all of a sudden, they got these things that kill flies in the shop. They never had that before. And even back home where we are, we have the, 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 the simpler method with this little plastic strip. You know the strip with the sticky thing? You have them back in Zimbabwe too. We have it in Jamaica, the little sticky thing. They never had none of that here. So it is the influences that we come that they, they, they you follow what I'm saying? That they, that they, that they, that they, that they, they help to improve. But I, I'm here to, folks, guess what? The value systems that you brought here and, and, and the thing, I, I'm trying to share with us that things are so different when we've come over here. But the word of God is saying, as we prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ, we need to hold on fast to that which we have. You know, sometimes you come in this country and people try to make you feel that you ain't nothing special. My, my, my mom, when she left Jamaica, my mom had private tuition. My, my, my mother, her, her, her parents ran supermarkets. And she came to England. Coming to England was a step down. And for some of you, coming to England is a step down. But I'm here to let you know, guess what? 
coming to England, God has allowed you to come here for a reason. And so we must hold that fast which we have so that no one steals our crown. And it doesn't matter how difficult life may become, no matter how hard life is, hold on to Jesus. Well, some of you are not with me this morning. No matter how rough things get, no matter how difficult it may seem, I'm here to let someone know that we ought to hold on to Jesus. Do you really know what I'm talking about? When I'm talking about hold on, I mean grip, hold on with for your dear life. I, I, I was born here in the UK. But when I was nine years old, I had the privilege of going to Jamaica. I went to Jamaica, I went to meet my grandparents, and I was in Jamaica, and my grandfather had a donkey. Some of you don't know about donkey. You, you, you're too sophisticated. Some of you don't know about donkey, but when I went to Jamaica at nine years old, my grandfather had a donkey. And you know, I thought it was fun to play with the donkey. My grandfather's donkey had a hamper on this side and a box, a big, you know, the, you know those things? Hampers on both sides of the donkey. And my grandfather said, do not play with the donkey. <laughs> so he would go to ground, dig his yam and his banana and put it on the donkey. And then he decided to come home. And, 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 and one day we were coming home now. In Zimbabwe, you have beautiful roads. You have nice, very nicely paved roads. But in Jamaica, where, 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 where my grandfather lived, them roads weren't so smooth. And, 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 and there was parts of the road that was like a precipice. So, so when you look over there, if you fell over there, you was going to go far for a long time. You don't have those roads in Zimbabwe. We, so in, in Jamaica, so I, my grandfather went into the shop to get something. So I climbed on the donkey, nine years old. I climbed over the donkey and the basket was kind of in the way. So guess what? I jumped over the donkey onto his neck. So I'm sitting on the neck, the hampers behind there. And you know what the donkey decided to do? The donkey turned his head, went over to the part where the precipice is and bent down his head. I started to slide off the neck of the donkey. And I don't know about you saints, but I gripped, I held on to the basket, I held on to the hair on the donkey's neck. I held on for dear life as I was falling there. The only thing I could cry out in my mind is, Jesus, help me. And then the donkey lifted up his head and walked over to the other side. You want to see how quick I jump over that donkey? <laughs> Saints, when I, when I was holding on, I stiffened out every part of my body so that I wouldn't fall off the donkey. And Jesus says, hold fast to that which thou hast. We have to hold on with every ounce of our strength because the devil is on the warpath, seeking whom he may devour. But, but, but I want to bring a little good news. Uh, even though you might feel trapped in this land sometimes, coming from a better place, I want you to know that God has allowed us to come to this place so that we can be ministers in this place. I was reading in Kings. What book did I say? I was reading in 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 5. It, 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 2 Kings chapter 5, uh, I saw a passage of scripture there where I'd like to entitle this, The Rich, The Poor, The Doubtful, and The Greedy. The rich, the poor, the doubtful, and the greedy. Because the Bible says, Now Naaman was captain of the host of, king, of the king of Syria. And the Bible says, Naaman was no ordinary man. The Bible says, Naaman was a captain of the, oh, he was captain of the host of the king of Syria. And he, the Bible says, was a what? Great man with his master. The Bible says was, he wasn't just great, but he was honorable. Because of him, the Bible says, the Lord ha had given deliverance unto Syria. 
uh, and, and he was a mighty man of valor. I'm talking about the rich, and when you read on a little bit more, you will discover that Naaman was a rich man. He was a powerful man. He was a, he was a mighty man of valor, the Bible says. The Bible says he was a great man. And then, you know, when it says that he was a mighty man of valor, then they came in this word called but. They tell me but is a what? A conjunction. And any time you find but, but erases what came before it. So he was a mighty man of valor. He was the captain of the host. He was a great man. He was an honorable man. He was a rich man. And then it says but. But the Bible says he was a leper. He had a disease that he had tried to hide from everybody. Have you ever been in a place where you don't want people to know anything about you? Have you ever been in a situation where you have a secret that you don't want anybody else to know about? Naaman had a secret because he had money, he had position, he had, he had authority, but he didn't want anybody to know about his condition. But guess what? The next verse says, and the Syrians had gone out and, uh, in companies and they had brought captives onto the, out of the land of Israel a little maid. Naaman and his army had gone out into Israel and they had taken from Israel a slave girl. They call her a little maid. Listen to this. Look at this. The Bible says she was a little maid. She was taken and, and, and she waited on Naaman's wife. Now, I, you know, some, some of us, I don't know about you Christian friends, but sometimes you know, when you're walking around in the UK, you kind of feel like a little maid. Sometimes the pressures around us, they're trying to degrade us and make us feel almost like we're not supposed to be here and this is a strange land. But I'm here to let you know that even when people are trying to make us feel like a little maid, let them understand that we serve a mighty God. Amen. Naaman was a great man. Naaman was, was, a, was a mighty man. But guess what? This little maid, this little slave girl, she might have been a maid, she might have been a slave girl, but she knew God Almighty. Amen. Naaman might have been mighty, but she knew God Almighty. And the Bible says she knew her God for herself. She had a personal relationship for herself. And saints of God, when you have a relationship with God for yourself, you just can't keep it to yourself. So even though they had had her in slavery, even though she was serving his wife, she, she kind of felt sorry for him. And the Bible says she went to her mistress and she said, I, I, I wish Naaman was able to go down to Israel or go down to my church or go down to my back home congregation. And she said, because there is a prophet in Israel and he would be healed. Amen. She said, she said, I, I, I wish, uh, let me... It's verse 3. Verse, she said unto her mistress, Would to God, my Lord, were with, were, were with the prophet that is in, in, in Samaria, for, the, for, for he would recover him of his leprosy. Saints, she was in a strange land, but guess what? She, wasn't, she didn't have a strange relationship with God. She was in a strange land in captivity, but she was witnessing for her Lord. And the Bible says, verse 4, and one of them went and they told his Lord, saying, thus and thus said the maid that is, that is of the land of Israel. He said, listen, we heard, we heard this girl is talking about, but there's a man in Israel who can cause healing. And the Bible says, the Bible says this got to the king, the king of Syria. And the king of Syria said, go to, go and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him 10 talents of silver and 6,000 pieces of gold. This is, this is, this is Naaman taking all this stuff and, 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 and 6,000 pieces of silver and 10 changes of clothes. You remember now, Syria had taken Israel captive. Syria had besieged Samaria. And now the king of Syria is sending 
Now remember, Samaria is where the Israelites lived. Samaria represented the city of God. Samaria was where God's people live. Are you with me? And this little girl was taken from God's people to be a slave. And she believed in God so much. She believed in God Almighty so much that she, she testified and she said, listen, she said, she said, I wish you could just go back to my church. I, I, I wish you could just be with my brothers and sisters, the, the Zimbabwean fellowship. She said, because there's a prophet in Israel that will cause healing. And the king said, the king, and you know something? When I, when I pause to think about this, saint of God, what would make you think to listen to the words of a little girl? Why would the whole of, why would the whole of Syria listen to just this little girl's testimony? It wasn't just her word, saint. It was the life that she was living. Her life testified to the power of God. Even though she was a little maid and captured in slavery, she still let people know that she serves the almighty God. And so I want you to understand, Christian friends, no matter what job you do, no matter how hard things may press you in the UK, Live the life that demonstrate that we are children of the heavenly king. No matter how hard it gets, saints of God, walk with the Lord and talk with the Lord and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ so that when you open your mouth, everybody will know that this is a child of the king. She said, listen, I only wish you could come to the day of fellowship down in what, what, what place is this? Where are we? Luton. I wish you could come down to Luton where, 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 where the saints know how to pray. And the Bible says, the king of Syria said, give it let He said, I'm going to give you a letter. And guess what, saints? When they went down there and he brought the letter, verse 6. Verse 6. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, therewith send Naaman thy servant to, to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Saints of God, this is the king of Israel. The king of Israel, are you listening to me? King of Israel, God's people, you know. And you know, we like to say that we are God's people. We, we, we like to talk about us as being spiritual Israel. Here, Naaman, an ungodly man following the instruction of a godly little girl coming to the people of God and, 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 and when she comes to the king of Israel and it came to pass that when the king, verse 7, when the king of Israel had read the letter, are you with me there, verse 7? The man in charge of God's people. When the king of Israel had read the letter. The Bible said that he rent his clothes. And he said, am I God to kill and to be made alive? That this man doth send unto me to recover the man of his leprosy. Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh to quarrel against me. So far in the story, we have three people now. We have a rich man. We have a poor girl. Now we have a doubting king. We have a rich man that has a problem. A poor girl in slavery with a mighty God. Now we have the man king of Israel who's supposed to know God that when the challenge comes guess what he said what what the man want to cause trouble with me now but I'm so thankful that even in the midst of trouble and strife God always has a voice in Israel and the Bible says when Elisha heard about it 
Elisha said, Elisha said, when you read on to the next verse, when Elisha, and, and, and it was so, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel rent his clothes, he sent a message to the king saying, wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come to me and I shall, and, 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 and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Saints of God, whenever our young people, whenever people get in trouble, whenever people are sick, they're supposed to be able to come to the house of prayer. Whenever our members get in difficulty, they're supposed to be able to come to the house of prayer, to the, to the spiritual Israel. But you know, I was, I was reading this, Pastor Chandra, I, got, I began to see sometimes, uh, there's times in my experience that I've had the experience like Naaman. There's been times in my life where I've needed healing, physical healing, and, 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 and I had to go to the house of prayer. There's been times when I felt isolated, and every time, like the, like the little maid, I feel isolated. Every time I look to Jesus, he comes and he rescues me. But, 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 but there's times, if the truth be told, too many of us fall in the category of, 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 of the king of Israel. That, that, that we ought to know who God is. And when a little challenge comes our way, instead of our faith be strong like the little maid, guess what? We get upset. We say, why is the Lord challenging me like this? We start to rent our clothes. We start to get upset. We start to get disappointed and decide that we're not coming back to church anymore. Oh, you've gone quiet now. Decide that we're not going to go. We, we get upset and we get discouraged. But I'm so happy that all with the time, any time that I feel discouraged, God always shows up in time. And I like Elisha. Bible says Elisha, the man of God. I'm talking about the rich, the poor, the doubtful, and the greedy. The rich man came. Now look at this. Naaman had to swallow his pride. Naaman was captain of the host. Naaman captured people in Israel. Naaman was the mighty general that subdued Israel. Now he was sick. He had to go back to his same prisoners. And ask them for healing. Are you with me saints? Yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to tell you saints. Just keep trusting the Lord. Because guess what? Guess what? God always shows up. And even though we might feel like we're enslaved. Or we're trapped a little bit in this country. Guess what? Evil men at some point or other. Will have to come and bow to us as God's children. Are you with me? Some of us we have some bosses that we don't like. Some of us have some oppressors in our community that we don't like. But let me tell you something. Leave them to God. And let us continue to be faithful. Because God has a way to send our oppressors, our oppressors to come for healing in the house of the Lord. And we have to be ready to receive them. Are you with me? So here's the mighty general with his secret. Having to come back to the people of God. Sadly, the king wasn't ready. But guess what? Elisha was ready. And Elisha said, send him to me. And you know, I like how Elisha is. You know, when you are a child of God and you're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. You, 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 you know something? When you're filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, the devil has to flee from you. Look, 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 look what the Bible says. The Bible says, so, so, so Naaman came, verse 9. And look how Naaman comes now, verse 9. Verse 9, so Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots. And he stood at the door of Elisha. He wanted to make his presence known. He wanted everybody to know that he, the mighty one, was there. And you know something? I like the thing about this. The Bible says, Elisha sent a messenger unto him. Elisha decided that I'm not even coming outside to you. You need my help right now. So I'm not even going to come outside to you. So guess what? I'm going to send my messenger. 
And he said to the messenger, go tell Mr. Naaman to go wash himself seven times in the Jordan. The Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says when, uh, uh, but, but when Naaman, when Naaman heard this, he came out, he came out and he said, go wash yourself seven times. Thy flesh will come again unto thee uh, 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 and you shall be clean. Verse nine, in verse 11, the Bible says, but Naaman was wroth. Naaman was angry. And he went away and said, Behold, I thought he surely was going to come to me and stand and call upon the name of the Lord his God and strike his hands over the place and recover the leprosy. You know, sometimes we are like that. Whenever time we get ourselves in a situation, we expect God to come out and flash lightning. We expect God to come out and do some great Great demonstrations, but listen, let me tell you something. If we are to receive healing in our life, if we are to receive power in our life, the simple thing we have to do is obey the word of the Lord. Amen. Don't be looking for fireworks and lightning and all kinds of things to come. Just obey God's word. Some of you are not with me this morning, saints of God. We find ourselves in some situations where, we, where, we, where, we, where we're forced to work on Sabbath. Let me tell you, obey the word of the Lord. Stand for principle. Stand for what is right. And follow God's word, remembering the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Are you with me, saints? And God will reward you. Don't look for great massive things to come out. Just obey God's word. The Bible says, the Bible says, Naaman went away and he was vexed. I thought he was going to come and make some uh, call upon and strike his hands over the place and recover me. And, uh, and he said, oh, no. and then he starts to say, River Jordan, why are you sending me to River Jordan? We have better rivers than this. He, he, he said, isn't the Abner and, 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 and Farpa rivers and of Damascus better than all the rivers in Israel? May I not wash in, in, in them and be clean? So he turned and he went away, the Bible says, in a rage. But thank God another servant was there. Servant said to him, listen, if God had asked you to go do some big thing, wouldn't you have done it? If he if it asked you to do some, climb some man and jump and do some crazy stuff, would you have done? He said, but, but, but he's only asked you to do something simple. Just go dip in the Jordan. Now, Jordan, Jordan River wasn't too clean, you know, saints. It, 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 it was like going over to the Thames. You ever been to the Thames and looking there? I was looking on the internet this week to see some rivers in, in Zimbabwe, and you have some beautiful rivers over there. Some, some, some beautiful blue flowing water and some streams and, and lakes. That I, I, I said to myself, I want to go to Zimbabwe. Just to put my foot in one of the rivers. And, 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 and name and name and name and said, listen, he started to go. But I'm here to let you know, saints of God, when God gives us an instruction, no matter what it is, all we have to do is obey. And you know, Naaman decided that he was going to obey. He wasn't happy at first. But he decided to obey. And when he obeyed, saints of God, I could see him going down one time in the river, coming up and seeing his hands look the same. Two times in the river, coming up, seeing his hands look the same. Uh, three times coming up and seeing his hands look the same. Four times going down and five times going down and six times going down. And, and, and he could have walked away right then and said, listen, I've done enough of this. But when God says seven, saints of God, we have to do seven. When God says move, we've got to move. And the Bible says he went down the seventh time. And when he came up out of the water the seventh time, the Bible says he saw his hands, he saw his feet, he saw his body, and he recognized that he was healed. And he was only healed, Ellen White says, because he was obedient to the man of God. And brothers and sisters, Christian friends, if you want to be successful in this life, if you want to be successful in the United Kingdom, if you want to be successful in your marriages, if you want to be successful in your education, if you want to be successful in your academic pursuit, I'm here to let you know we ought to be obedient to the Word of God. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day, which day? 
The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. And too many times we come from back home and we come to a place. And because this place is so big, we think we can sneak and do all that we want to do behind the scenes. And nobody will know. But my mom told me a story one time. She says, when, when, when we think nobody knows, God knows. When we think nobody can trace us, God knows. And things you never used to do back home, you think you can do over here. God knows. But if we're to be successful, and if we're to receive healing, if we're to, if we're to move forward in this country, and if we're to be successful and to grow in Jesus Christ, we need to have the attitude as the little girl. Recognize, worship, and be obedient to God Almighty. It was through her influence that Naaman was healed. Naaman was healed because he was obedient to the voice of the Lord. And you know something? Look at what Naaman said when he finished, when he received his healing. Then he went down and he dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. Verse 14. And, and, and his flesh came again onto his flesh and as a little child and he was clean and the bible says and then verse 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 15 he returned to the man of god he and all his company and he came and he stood before him and he said behold now i know that there is no god in all the earth but the god of israel are you with me saints because a little girl testified about the goodness of her Lord. Here was a rich man that had a terrible situation, able to receive healing because a humble, poor little girl in captivity stood up for who she believed in. Stood up for Almighty God and she encouraged him to go to, to, to the man of God. And when he was obedient. So saints, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to balance this thing here. I'm trying to show that, listen, no matter how rich we are, no matter how much position we have, illness can come on us at any time. But if illness comes and we have faith like the little girl and we're obedient to God's word, we will receive healing. No matter what problems may come, no matter how powerful we may be, if we humble ourselves under the almighty hand of God, he in due time will lift us up. And then when God has blessed us, when God has healed us, when God has established us, we ought to come to the stage where we're able to stand up and say, there is no other God like the God of Israel. There is no other God like my God. And from that point, follow him. But you know, before I close, Pastor Chandarai got nervous when I was reading this passage. There was a man in this story, the fourth one, the greedy. He lived with the prophet. Are you with me, saints? He lived with the prophet. He's seen the power demonstrated through the prophet. He knows the word of God. He, he, he walked with the prophet. And, 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 and you know, Naaman, Naaman, tried to, Naaman tried to give Elisha some food and some money. And, some, and Elisha said, no, no, no. He said, no, no, no. This is just the will of God. I'm not here to make money. Off of people suffering. Are you listening somebody? Because some of us walking with the Lord make money off of anything. I mean, sorry, let me put that in proper English. Make money off of anything. The Jamaican was coming out a little bit there. Some of us profit off of people's disappointment. Some of us, our friends come to us in need and instead we help them. I mean them. We charge them. Oh, you think I don't know what I'm talking about? There was a time when we used to lean on each other. We must, what I'm trying to say, saints, is stop being greedy. Too many of us are greedy. 
and when we're greedy to the point that we tell a lie, when, 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 read it when you go home, saints. Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man, the servant of the man of God, when, when he saw that his master did not take the money from Naaman, and Naaman had left and right down the road, Gehazi decided that he's going to go and lie. And he went and he, and, and, and when Naaman saw him, Naaman got off his horse, the Bible says, and Naaman turned around and said, well, can I help you? And he said, yes, two of my friends are coming. And they need some clothes and, and just give me a little clothes and a little money. And guess what? Naaman gave him double what he asked for. And then the Bible said he took it and went back home and hid it. And then Elisha, let them say something to me. You know, my, when my mom was alive, my mom had a way. She was so in tune with the Holy Ghost that, that it, 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 if, if I brought friends home, and I said, Mom, this is so and so and so and so. My mom would say, Who is that young man? I said, Is my friend, Mom? She just come. He come from so and so. And she said, Something is not right. And I said, Mom, but he goes to such and such a church. Something is not right. She said, You need to let go of that friend. And you know something? If I ever disobey and stay with a friend, you soon learn later on. And I always wonder, Mom, how you know these things? Bring a young lady home and she said, something is not right, Steve. <laughs> then she's not coming back to my house. It, it, when my mom would say those things, I would, I would get nervous and say to God, that's my mom. But when I'm reading here, this is the prophet of God. Elisha said to Gehazi, where were you? And Gehazi said, nowhere. And, 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 and Elisha said to him, but my, wasn't my spirit with you when you did such and such with Naaman? Saints, my mom is just my mom, but if you were walking around Elisha, I would be nervous. Uh, one time in my church, can I tell you this story? I'm finishing now. One time I, I invited a preacher, a, a preacher from America to come and to do a revival meeting in my church. And when I invited him, I'm a pastor, you know, pastor, invited this preacher. One of, my, one, of my, one of my elders went to the general conference and he went to the prayer room. And there was this pastor there that had the gift of prayer. And, 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 and he came back and he said to me, pastor, you need to invite this man. And I invited the man over and the pastor came and he was preaching in my church. He was preaching in my church, preaching in my church. And things was happening and one lady came. One lady came and she said, I want you to come to my house and pray. And, 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 and she came and I went to the house with him. And she was in there. She said, I keep seeing shadows and things moving on the wall. And the man knelt down to pray. The pastor knelt down to pray. And as he started to pray, he looked up and he said, he said, you've been doing witchcraft. And the woman started to cry and he said, yes, and you have the books here. Go and get them. I, I'm sitting beside them. I think to myself, Lord, please don't let him look at me. <laughs> Serious, saints. The woman went and she brought out the books. The man, the pastor was preaching. And he, and he, and he said, and, 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 and I, I was nervous beside the man of God. And, and, and you know, my car, I had a car. Would you believe I had this car? And the car would give problems, shutting off in the road and giving problems. And one day I was driving in the car with the preacher and the car shut off in the middle of the high street. And you know what he said? He said, Pastor McKenzie, come with me. I'm thinking, where's he going? The man went out in the middle of the road, put his hands on my bonnet and started to pray in the name of Jesus. I was like, standing by the car like, I was like, I hope none of my friends drive past. <laughs> I, I, I was, the man put his hand, he prayed, and, and saints of God. Then he said, turn on the engine. And I turned on the engine. And it never gave me problems after that. Yeah. And that's a man of God. No, no, no. If I can be nervous around a man of God. Reverend Elisha, it, 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 this, 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 
Eliezer thought he could lie to Elisha. And, 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 and we're looking, I would have been so nervous to even say anything to Elisha. But Gehazi told a lie. You know, when you read the story, the Bible says Elisha, Elisha was giving him a chance to confess, but he wouldn't confess. And instead, Elisha, the, the, you know something, the leprosy from Naaman came on, onto Gehazi. And he went away a leper. Let me tell you something, saints. Don't be greedy. I know things are hard in this country. But let us think about our brothers and our sisters who are worse off than us. Let us not forget our parents and our brothers and our sisters, our cousins. And I know they give us burden sometimes calling from back home. But don't forget our roots. Amen. Don't get greedy so much that everything we want, we want. And we want everything. Remember those back home. Remember those who have sacrificed to get us where we are. Here in this story, there was a rich man that needed healing. And he only got healing because there was a faithful servant of God who stood up for God even though she was in slavery. And she was humble and God lifted her up. And then you have the doubtful king. But when we're doubting saints of God, we deny the power. But praise the Lord, we recognize and we rest assured today that there is power in the name of Jesus. Don't be like Gehazi, greedy. Greedy so much that we go tell lies. And then when the Lord is asking us to confess our sins, we're still telling lies. And you see when I'm talking here and I'm saying to you, I'm talking here about Gehazi, we go, hmm, and we say, hmm, but guess what? If I can be afraid of a preacher that has the power of healing, and we look at Gehazi who wasn't nervous about Elisha, then saints of God, just think about ourselves. Pastor, Pastor Vargas and Elisha is no comparison to God. That in our lives we still lie sometimes. Bring you all the times into the storehouse. That there may be meat in my house. And prove me now. Seth the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven. But yet some of us, we get a little clever and we kind of say to ourselves, but the Lord knows. I need this money now. And we take off a little of the tithe until sometimes we don't give none at all. Oh, got everybody going quiet now? Let me tell you something. God rewards us when we're faithful. God rewards us when we're faithful. Older people don't have this problem. Is we younger ones that have the nice jobs. Are you with me? We younger ones that are qualified now with education and all the rest of it. Older people don't have this problem. Pastor, Pastor, when I'm when I'm pastoring and I go to visit some of my members who are shut in and they can't come out and they haven't been to church for weeks, they will come with a box full of tithe envelopes. And, they, and they're not touching it for any reason at all. And then you have some of us under 60 and 70 and 80,000 pounds salaries. And we're the ones that have the problem to give our return our tithes to the Lord. Because we're dabbling into so many things. Are you with me? I'm talking about the greedy. Some of us are so hoarding things to ourselves, we forget about those back home. We forget about those in our community. We're here on Zimbabwe Day. Let us remember our brothers and our sisters around us. When my parents came to this country, they found the odds were against them. But they found community amongst the brethren. And they started to share what they had with one another. And when one didn't have, everybody made sure that one had. When one didn't have a job, everybody knew that this one was out of work. So we came together and made sure everybody was looked after. Are you with me? When I was a little boy growing up, you, you thought I would hear these stories about mission stories abroad about people not having shoes. Well, I was in this country with one pair of shoes. One pair of shoes and one pair of plimsolls. And that pair of shoes is what you wore to church. And it would last for many years. And the plimsolls was the one that wore out. 
You whirled out to school, you worked everywhere. You had to do that. And then sometimes people would look, somebody in the church would look and then they realize, let me send him a little change. You follow what I'm saying? They looked out for other people's children. We watched out for one another. Don't be greedy and just keep everything to ourselves. It didn't end up good for Gehazi. But the story finishes. Naaman went away healed simply because he was obedient to God. He humbled himself and had to come to his enemies, had to come to the nation that they had captured, and he had to bow down himself to God Almighty. And he was obedient to the word of God and he received healing. The young lady was humble. And she lifted up the name of Jesus in everything she did. Therefore, she was powerful. Are you with me? Because she was humble. She was so powerful that when she spoke, the general listened. And the king obeyed and sent the, man, sent the soldier to Israel to be healed. Why? Because she humbled herself under the almighty hand of God. And in the right time, God lifted her up so that her voice was so powerful. The king of Israel doubted God so much that he just got depressed when the king came. So many of us find ourselves in that position sometimes that we doubt God. But today, all we have to do is trust him. And hold that fast which we have so that no one will steal our crown. And even though times have changed and things are changing, remember this. God, our God never changes. And our God never fails. I don't know which part of this story you may feel you fit into. But I do know. That if, even if you're greedy today and you turn your life around, God is able. Amen. If we're humble today, God is able to lift us up. Even if we're going through a doubting experience, God is able. If you're rich and you're going through illness or whatever it is, you might be successful, but you're still not happy. God is able to turn it around. The good thing about this story is that God is able to, to, to handle all of our situation. If we obey his word, God is faithful to do all that he has promised for us if we obey him. I don't know about you today, but I, I want to pray for somebody. You might be going through a situation that you need the Lord to bless you. And so I'm calling on you today, if you're in need of prayer today, no matter what the situation is, no matter which category we may fall in, we can walk away today like Naaman, healed, and praising the Lord. We can walk away like the young girl lifted up and praising the Lord. We can walk away from here knowing that our sins have been forgiven and our prayers have been heard and that God walks with us through any situation. I don't know about you, but I'm calling you to come for prayer. There's a little song that you say, it's me, me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And today your people are standing in the need of prayer. Some of us, as we've gone through this passage of scripture, identify with Naaman. Some of us have lots of riches, lots of things, but, but we're in need of a blessing. We're in need of healing today. So we're standing in the need of prayer. Some of us, like the young girl, feel trapped and enslaved in some conditions that we're in. But we're standing in the need of prayer today, even as we lift up your name and glorify your name some of us are doubtful like the king of Israel even though we walk with you for so many years 
coming to this country has put such a strain on us that we wonder if you're really there. So we're standing in the need of prayer. Some of us, Lord, have been greedy, heaping up things unto ourselves, and we're in danger of being wiped out. So we're standing, Lord, like Gehazi, in the need of prayer, asking for forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Father, if we've let you down in the name of Jesus, forgive us, Lord. If we've disappointed you in any way in the name of Jesus, I pray for forgiveness today, Lord. Father, if we've not rightly stood for you in the name of Jesus, empower us that we may stand for you though the heavens fall. Father God, some of us are in a situation where we're in need of healing. Teach us how to obey your words. Heavenly Father, we know that you are God. We know that you are able. We know that you have power. We know that you can sustain us. We know that you can transform us. We know that you can heal us. And so today we're standing in the need of prayer, calling on you in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. Please, please, please hear and answer our prayers. Some of us are going through a hard time. Some of us don't know which way to turn. Some of us want to go back home. Some of us want to go a little bit faster. But we know that you know what is best for us. And so we place our life in your hands. And we call upon you, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, give us faith to trust you more. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you will touch your people once again with your holy hands. I pray, grant us healing, grant us transformation, fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit so that our lives will shine in our communities wherever we may live, wherever we may go, wherever we may work, wherever we may be studying. In the name of Jesus, bless us in a special way. Father, bless the leadership of this group of individuals that come together to support one another. I heard somebody mentioning about choosing leaders in the name of Jesus. May you go into that selection process and choose the one you need to lead your people in this troubled land. In the name of Jesus, Lord, provide leadership, provide strength, provide a way out of nowhere. And I pray in a special way that you will be with the children of this congregation, of this community. May you help them to hold fast to that which they have. And may you help their parents to hold Hold on to what they have so that their children will learn how to walk in this strange land. So Father, forgive us. Transform us. Fill us and use us again, I pray, to your name's honor and glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. We thank you for hearing. We thank you for answering our prayers because we ask this and other unmentioned mercies through no other name but Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Amen.